Welcome back to a Kelly File midterm special, The Democrats' Last Defense. Now more than ever, modern campaigns are remembered for the political ads that flood the airwaves. And in recent days, the airwaves have gotten especially fierce with ads in the state of North Carolina. First, Democrats tried to tie the Republican Senate candidate there to the shooting death of Trayvon Martin. Then came this from the other side. Black people are just being used by limousine liberals who have become our new overseers. We've only traded one plantation for another. Howie Kurtz is the host of Media Buzz on the Fox News Channel, which airs on Sunday mornings. Howie, good to see you. And so in, in North Carolina and several other states, we have seen it boil down to these ads. Are they having a real impact or is it more gaffes and other things that campaigns do on the road? Well, that particular ad for uh, Tom Tillis, the Republican challenging Kay Hagan, I think using an African-American state senator makes sense. But when he uses language like trading one plantation for another or food stamps, I think it's going to turn black voters off or just be a wash. But also you mentioned, the, you know, Ferguson being invoked in ads that aren't even in Missouri. I think this is really about both sides trying to gin up the base, get them excited on emotional hot button issues. Right. I mean, they, they will they will go to the lowest place in terms of race baiting, in particular in this in North Carolina, we have seen in the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. All right, and, uh, so let's talk about Iowa and the Jody Ernst ad, which we've already played for the viewers, and the pig. I mean, a lot of people were turned off by this, but it's worked. It's worked for her. This castration ad absolutely put Jody Ernst on the national map. It's funny. It makes you squeal. And who's going to be offended except for some pig lovers? Well, I mean, they show the little pig right after she talks about castrating them. I mean, it's like a little piglet. We're still talking about it. The head came out during the primary. That's an effective piece of political communication. That's the communication. point, is to get you talking about it. All right, what about out in Colorado? We talked with the other panelists about how uh, Mark Udall, the Democrat, has been so focused on women's issues, they call him Senator Uterus out there. But he keeps hitting the women's issues, including in this ad that we're showing here. Well, I think that it's been effective for Udall for this reason. Going after his Republican opponent, Cory Gardner, uh, he says that uh, he had championed a crusade to outlaw birth control. Now, Cory Gardner comes back with an ad that says, no, 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 hey, I'm for uh, over-the-counter birth control. But by the way, I've listened to the voters. I've changed my mind about this so-called personhood amendment, which some people think could have restrictions on birth control. So he actually moved the ball in this. But Udall seems to be pounding this above all else because Democrats going after that female vote. All right. In New Hampshire, Gene Shaheen is in a battle with uh, Scott Brown, and he wasn't expected to do much in this race, but now he's closed what was a 10-point gap. Uh, mm -hmm. Here is an ad that she's run attacking him on, wish and, um, on women's issues. Watch. In Massachusetts, Scott Brown pushed for a law to force women considering abortion, force them to look at color photographs of developing fetuses. Now, he came out and called that despicable. The Washington Post gave it one Pinocchio, which means mostly correct, but not fully correct. The forced women they took issue right. with. But did it work? Well, it worked only in the sense that, you know, what is Jean Jaheen trying to do? She's trying to get female voters, especially in New Hampshire, to feel that Scott Brown is not on their side. So what does Scott Brown do? He comes back and says, I'm pro-choice, which is true, despite his support of that legislation. And he also says, and I'm, we're, you're hearing this from Jean Shaheen, who's voted for six years with Barack Obama. This is the GOP playbook. No matter what is the charges, my opponent doesn't like children. You come back and say, yeah, but uh, she uh, was seen in a room with President Obama. So Republicans very much trying to use the president's unpopularity against Democrats in every instance they can. How much do you think TV presence affects these races? Does it matter if you're if you're good on TV, if you're good, obviously, in a debate, it'll help. But does how important has TV become in penetrating the electorate? I think increasingly TV is most of the ball game. Candidates don't do quite as much in terms of town halls and pressing the flesh. They spend millions of dollars on these attack ads. And even if they're not very good, you know, that you do enough retakes, you can get a reasonable commercial out of it. What happens is there's so many negative ads that people get sick of them and they start to wonder, well, which side should I believe? Mm -hmm. They wind up just feeling disgusted at the end of the process and then they stay home, which is not what they're supposed to do. Howie, good to see you. Same here, Megan.